for today's inspirational message. Peace be with you.
Thank you so much. Good morning. My name is Safi. It's an honor to be here with you today. That last song was one of mine, and this next song is a song by Karen Drucker. It's called Let Go of the Shore. Lynn, I just love the ease of her voice. Isn't it soothing? It's wonderful. Thank you so much. And I love the titles, you know, flow into the mystery. Let go of the shore and flow into the mystery. Life is always calling us, let go, new territory, flow into the mystery. It's going to be all right. Divine order is always unfolding. It's always established, but we'll never get there if we're holding on to the shore, you know, just let go. And then I love that phrase from her first song, return to your soul. Your soul has everything in it that it needs 
to do this thing called life. It's all within. So we must constantly remember. Let me get back to the remembrance of who I am and who I've been created to be, which is beautiful. So thank you, thank you. Good morning to everyone. Good morning, good morning. Thank you, thank you. I welcome those of you who are with us online, sending your light and your love. We acknowledge your spirit and your presence in this wonderful sacred place because there's nothing that separates this. No physicality. Energy is, is uh, translucent. It's trans it just moves without barriers. And so there's nothing that can separate us. That's what the Bible says. There's nothing that can separate us from the love of God. There's nothing that keeps us separate. So we've, we're thankful to all of you who are with us today. And to you who are here in the house, I acknowledge you. If you're here for the first time, we're welcome, welcome, welcome. Just raise your hand if you're here for the first time. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. And uh, I just invite you to make sure that you get a visitor's pack as you leave the sanctuary on your way out so that you can be abreast of all the things that we do here in this wonderful spiritual community called what? Unity. Unity of Washington, D.C. So we're grateful and thankful. We're going to do things a little differently this morning. We have a couple of technical challenges, and, uh, but we're working it out. We're going to make it seem, I told the band, this is what we're going to do. However things unfold, that's the way we planned it. <laughs> See, we're going to start with that notion. However it unfolds, that is the way we planned it. So we're naming it all good. We're naming it all good. Well, we're starting. This is the first Sunday in month. Our children, our Sunday school is back, so I don't know if our children have come, but yeah. We want to make sure we get those new young souls in the house, too, because they bring their own special brand of energy, do they not? <laughs> young people come with energy, so we welcome them back, and we're grateful and thankful. There's a lot going on. This is the first Sunday in the month of March, and March has been designated as Women's History Month, right? Women's History Month. And when I was uh, in elementary school, we had to uh, do book reports. I don't know if they still do them now, but we had to do book reports. I mean, you had to read a book and you reported on it. And we were to do a book report, three of them, on different ones, on people who we admired. And I chose these three women because I I admired their heart, I admired their tenacity, I admired their boldness, right? And I admired the fact that each of them in their own way refused to stay in the box that was assigned to them. Now, you know, whether we know it or not, we have all our little boxes that we kind of, that we're comfortable sometimes in our box because it's known, it's familiar, right? And so even if it's tight, we, it's what we know. But these three ladies, in their own ways, they just refused to stay in the box that they were assigned to. And the first one that I chose, and this was over 60 years ago, but the first one was Harriet Tubman. Harriet was my girl before the movie came out and before she became popular with folks. I loved reading the life and story of Harriet Tubman because she was the epitome of, of a brave heart. You know, she had a brave heart, a brave spirit. She was so in tune. I loved the fact, and even when I was a young girl, I was always attracted to the divine, to spiritual approaches and to things of the spirit. And I love that she was so connected to the divine that she would get her spiritual downloads so that her intuition was activated to guide her through the territory she had to travel through, right? In such dire situations and straits, but she would, she would follow the outer signs of the moon and the water and the river. She knew how to do that, but she relied upon that inner spirit to guide her, to say when it was safe to move, when it was time to be still, what direction did you know? And so that helped her out through her life, and that, that sort of spoke to me. I loved her fierceness. She was fierce. That was a fierce, bold sister. 
I put that in here. She was like, a, she was a boss. Now, I wanted to say that she was something else, but I couldn't because I thought, well, maybe that's a little bit of a stress. But she was a bad sister. I'm going to say a bad sister. But you know where I'm going, right? That girl was bad, right? And I love that about her. She was fair. She was strong. She was confident. She, look, she even said she used to wheel a pistol. And when people got uh, a little uncomfortable on the journey or frightened, you know, about because it was dangerous. If they were caught, they knew they would be sent back, maybe even killed. And she couldn't ha afford to have anybody spoil her good thing. And so she would, when people would get uh, a little leery and say they want to turn back, she'd pull out that pistol and she said, you got two choices. You can move forward into freedom or you can die right here where you stand. <laughs> and I loved it. And guess what? Most people chose what? To I think I'll move forward into freedom. <laughs> but she was, and they knew she meant it. She meant it. Bold sister, wonderful sister. And then I chose Eleanor Roosevelt. And I chose Eleanor because she was another sister who refused to stay in the box that she was assigned to. She was not afraid to speak truth to power, even to her husband, who was the president of the United States of America. Eleanor spoke her mind and she spoke her heart and she was truly, you know, sort of out of the box. Because by then, as a first lady, you were supposed, or as a woman in general, you had a box, you stayed in your lane, you were supposed to be demure and, you know, sweet. And Eleanor was bold. She just did things her own way. She could not necessarily be contained. And not only did she willingly speak truth to power, but she also was, was not afraid, unafraid to speak up for that which is right, to do the right thing. And she had become a member of the DAR, which is the Daughters of, American Revol of the American Revolution. And it was a, a, a white segregationist group of women who had a lot of power, a lot of influence. They had, had, they had Constitution Hall built so that they could use it to promote and premiere the folks who they wanted to. And Eleanor had become friends with Marian Anderson and loved her powerful voice. And she even invited Marian to come to the White House to sing for the king and queen of England that had visited. And so she was so proud and so she wanted Marian to sing in Constitution Hall. But of course, that posed a problem because they had a rule that no persons of color could enter in or participate or perform in the hall. And so Eleanor, rather than, you know, she kind of, rather than just beat them over the head, she just decided, well, that's fine. We'll find another way. And so she decided that she was going to resign, number one, right? She resigned from her position as being a member, and then she proceeded to book Marion on one of the biggest things. You can't do Constitutional Hall. How about Lincoln Memorial Center? We'll just go there and have her sing. And of course, that became an iconic place for those who were speaking. Martin Luther King spoke from those steps. And so, you know, Eleanor kind of set that up, and I, and I love that. I love that she was not afraid to step out of her privilege and step out of her position of privilege to do the right thing, to promote the ideals that she knew in her heart and soul were correct. And that although there were voices being denied, she was determined that this great voice would not be denied to be heard. And so I love that about Eleanor. You know, there's some other stuff that she did. That, and even as a young, you know, a young uh, girl in elementary school, somehow, something about fierce women spoke to me, you know. So I loved it. And my last person that I chose, another woman who I think was out of the box, I called her, uh, another woman who was not afraid and needed to, what I call, level up. This woman had to level up in order to live a full life. And so I chose Helen Keller. Now, a lot of people think that, you know, we all know the story of, of Helen, but it's one that speaks to me of the great power 
of God, the power of one's determination of a soul, right? Because we know that she was definitely in a prescribed box of limitation, right? As a young, she could not hear, nor could she see. Now, I want you to think about that. Not being able to hear, nor being able to see, which means it was very difficult to communicate or to relate to the outside world. There was nothing to stimulate, nothing to cause her to feel that she could express herself because she had no reference for anything. Nothing, right? And yet, somehow or another, she was moved and called by spirit to level up. Now, before I get into a little bit more of how she did that, I want to share maybe where this term level up comes from. It's actually a gaming term, right? It's a term that, that came from the gaming community. And basically, it means that in order to move up to the next level in a game, you had to master certain abilities and skills and uh, 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 level at a certain level of the game in order to move up in the game. You had to learn certain skills. You had to gain new abilities, new strengths. You had to become better at the level that you were on to the point where you mastered it before you could move on to the next level, right? And operate from that level. And so you basically had to continue to learn, to grow, to perfect what I call to, to uh, play and practice, pray, practice, play, practice, level up, get better, better, better. You see, and I love that term because leveling up in this concept is not about reaching goals, but it's more about acquiring better skills that enabled you to reach your goals. Sometimes we have all these plans and we have all these goals and we can map them all out, but we really don't have the ability to get there. We really don't know what to do to get ourselves there. It's just that it seems like a nice goal to have. Well, when the gaming thing, you go nowhere until you have perfected the level of where you are. You've gotten better. Then you're able to what? To move up to the next level. And so Helen Keller, she had an existence that was pretty uh, bleak. She relied, she was, as a child, she was kind of wild because she didn't know a reference for anything. And so when she wanted something, she just expressed herself in whatever wild way that she could, if she was hungry or this or that. And we all know the story of her wonderful teacher who worked with her to move her. But she had to level up to the next level of living and expressing herself and communicating with the world, giving meaning to her life and understanding the meaning of things, you know? See, we get a lot of our meaning because so, we, we can see, we can read, we can talk. There was a bright, conscious soul there, but not knowing awareness how to communicate, right? And so she had to learn how to make something have a connection and a meaning for her so that if she touched something, she understood after a while that this might have been a flower, right? But before she had language, before she could attribute this as flower, she just didn't know what it was. It was just stuff. And so she was just flailing about, but she learned to level up to this next level of living. She acquired new skills. When she acquired a new language, sign language, and she was able to put a meaning and put something in context, then all of a sudden her whole world began to shift and to open up. And she began to have an ability to have a relationship with the things that were all about her because she could ascribe a, what, a meaning to it. She could understand what this was, right? And as she, the more she got accustomed to understanding what were things in the outer world, this is what happened which I love, she immediately also began to develop her inner world because now she had awareness. Now she had consciousness of what things, and so she could then begin to go, continue to dwell deep within, but her world, her inner world began to expand as well as her outer world. And all of a sudden, she was in touch with the divine like nothing 
any of us probably have experienced. She could communicate because now her, her mind was opened, her, her awareness was expanded, and the divine began to speak with her as well to the point where she leveled up so much that she could, she could describe things and the beauty of things that she's never seen nor heard, but she could, she had, she could see things and she could hear things that were beyond sight and hearing, sight and sound. She could see things and hear things beyond sight and sound. Now that's, if you, if you get what I'm saying, that's deep, right? So, so deep. And if you've never read any of her writings or her poetry, the way she describes things, I used to say, how could she get to that description with something she's never heard, seen, but yet she could see beyond physical sight? And it was the divine. And I said, she worked at a level that sages and mystics, she, she lived at a level that the mystics lived at. And beyond that, because she was so in tuned to her inner world and the begin the divine began to commune with her to show her to speak to her to tell her what things were beyond just sight and sound this is what jesus meant when he said let those who have ears to hear and those who have eyes to see well everybody had you know most of the people had ears and eyes that didn't mean you could see a thing or you understood he was trying to get us to a different level of seeing knowing and understanding and she was powerful in what she would write. There's a poem that Langston Hughes wrote, and I didn't know he had been, but he wrote a poem about Helen Keller. And Langston Hughes, as you know, is a great African-American poet. And he wrote this poem, and it's called Helen Keller. And it says, she in the dark found light, brighter than many ever see. She within herself found loveliness through the soul's own mystery. And now the world receives from her dowers the message of the strength of inner power. That's what we learn. There's some kind of power in us that when we begin to tap it and touch it will take us beyond anything we could ever imagine. And she touched it, she discovered it, and it began to express to her in powerful, wonderful ways. And because of her, we looked and said, there must be something else going on that could allow someone who cannot see and cannot hear to see the beauty of the world and to describe it in such powerful terms. When we're looking at something and we just, well, I don't know, I see some flowers here, red and purple or whatever, but she would describe it with such exquisiteness that it, took, it had a depth to it, yet never having seen it. We've been empowered, friends, from on high. Each of us, we have been empowered. We have things within us that will enable us to level up, right, to level up. And, you know, leveling up is just meaning moving to the next level of life, the next expression. So what are you doing with the life you ha are living right now? Are you, are you leveling up or are you just kind of leveled out? See, either we're going to level out, move to a state of a plateau, well, this is good, I'm good. <laughs> or we're going to level up, keep what? Unfolding, learning, growing testing our limits, moving beyond, uncovering what else can I do? What else can I be? What else can I experience? What else is there? Sometimes have you ever said, is this all there is to life? No, it's what you make it. What are you doing? How are you opening up to life? This is a, a phrase that says, uh, from Goals Calling says, we all have, been, have big dreams and goals and we want to make them come true. To achieve those goals, you have to become better, learn new skills, and take new chances. When you become better, you level up. You don't get to the level. See, this is what I like about it. In the gaming world, you don't get to the next level just because it's a goal of yours, just because you'd like to reach that. You don't get there. You have to acquire the skills to reach the next level. 
You've got to improve. You've got to be better. You have to practice. You have to play, right? And the more you play that game, the better you become. And the more you are, the better you are, the next level you can reach. And it's a wonderful thing. You level up. You know, you play it, practice, practice, and all of a sudden, bam, you've perfected it next level. And then, you know, wonderful things happen. There's a book called um, The Game of Life and How to Play It. And it was written way, years and years and years ago by a woman named Florence Scovel Shin. You can go on it. I discovered it's free if you want to go online and read it. But it's a basic primer. That book is for people who are just stepping on the spiritual path of truth and metaphysics and, and really wanting to understand how does this thing called life work? And so, you know, it just outlines some of your basic spiritual laws that if you played with these laws, if you practiced these laws, you would get better at the game of life. And you would unfold and you would grow. And sometimes, you know, for me, I like to go back to the basics, back to the returning to the soul, you know, the stuff that I know is there, but I just put it aside because I'm so used. To it. I don't, well, I don't need to do my affirmations. Oh, I don't need to do denials. I know about that. I don't really need to pray. I prayed last week. I prayed last month. I got that. You know, I'm just going to say, okay, life is good or whatever. And you get out of the habit of doing and practicing what you know. You get comfortable of leveling out instead of leveling up. And I was, to, uh, yesterday I went to a, a function. We had a wonderful time at Mary Ann's um, her function was she was declaring herself as a candidate. And anyway, she had a, um, a program afterwards, after the program, right? And I knew that, uh, that it was going to be in a place that, you know, I was deciding whether to leave my car here, or take an Uber or whatever. I said, you know what? I'm going, I Ubered to the uh, one place, but I came back here and I said, I'm going to just drive. But I knew that it was very hard to find a parking spot there. And I had another function there once, and I drove around for an hour looking for a spot, and I, you know, I missed a lot of it. So this time I said, well, I don't want to miss it. I don't want to drive for an hour. And something said, okay, do what you used to do when you first came into truth. See if you can demonstrate a parking space. <laughs> you know? Because you remember when you first started, you were happy when you, le you learned how to demonstrate a parking space. So as I was driving, I said, you know what? I want a parking space. I want one on the block. I don't want to walk too far. I want a parking space. There will be a parking space. So as I was driving, I tuned my mind into a parking space. I want it. I deserve it. There will be a parking space when I arrive. I will have a what? A parking space. Now, there was a lot of traffic. I got stuck in traffic, which was fine because it gave me the opportunity to forget the traffic. I will have a parking space. And when I turned the final corner to the street that I needed to be on, guess what was there? I no sooner than turned, and what was there? A parking space. And I said, bam, thank you. I pulled in, paid my little money, and I went on, and I said, that's how I used to demonstrate all the time when I was first on this spiritual path. But then I get, you know, a little lazy, a little comfortable or whatever, I level out. And then I let all this other stuff get in the way when I know how to demonstrate. That's what we call it in New Thought. Or you practice as a practitioner. You demonstrate the truth. You prove it. You manifest it. And so I thought, yeah, I could do a parking space. And then I recognize also the same energy and focus that it takes to, to manifest a parking space can be the same process to manifest the healing or to manifest prosperity or to manifest a job or whatever it is. But what happens is we think, well, those things are really big things. And somehow that takes more than just a parking spot. Yeah, I could do that, but can I get a job that I've been waiting for, looking for. No, it's the same process. It's the same faith. It's the same commitment. It's the same use of the, of the spoken word. It's the same. The energies are the same. But what happens is we then nullify the energy because we think it's so big. Only God could do this. I'm not capable of demonstrating this. And so it's a little thought. Just a, it just takes a little thought of doubt. This morning I said I'm going to share an article that I wanted to read. And so, you know, I used to, sometimes when I do research, I'll, I'll look at it on the phone. So this morning I said, well, I don't want to use the phone because it's so small. I'm going to bring my computer. 
and I'm going to set it up and I'll read this whole thing from the computer. So I had a quick thought. It was very quick, right? A quick thought that said, hmm, what if the computer doesn't work? And it was just so, it was so fast. It went by, I let it go. I get here, I'm excited to set up my computer. I see what I want. The article is there. I'm fiddling with it, whatever, and boom, it goes out. And I'm like, oh my goodness, an impression. Ah. The Spirit had told me before to print it out at home, but the printing, when I printed it out, it, it was distorted. I said, I'll just read it from here. Right? So that thought was real quick. It didn't work, but what did I have a quick flash of? That it wouldn't work, right? That somehow I would put the rest of my talk, not on, on paper that I know, but I'll just read this article straight from the computer. That thought that I had that was a flash that said, well, what if it doesn't work? That thought was what interrupted my, I'm going to find me a parking space. I'm going to get this. I'm going to do this without doubt, right? And so we had a little trouble, and whoever showed I tried, I couldn't get a, a signal here. I couldn't get a signal in my office. The server was down, all this stuff. I ran up to Tracy, tried to get it working, blah, 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 blah. Finally, she used the hotspot. I said all that to say, when, I, when you recognize how powerful you are, when you understand how spiritual principles work, they work, as Johnny Coleman said, if you work them. And when you work them, you cannot doubt them. Because doubt is also a thought that is interjected into that vibration, and it then fluctuates and fools around with what you think you're trying to pray about or speak about. And then you go, well, what happened? And so I said, oh, man, the, 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 vi you know, the computer here, the, the signals don't work, and blah, 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 don't work. That's not, it had nothing to do with the signals. Nothing to do with that. It was my one quick thought. Mm, what if it doesn't work? Bam. You understand the process? So when you understand the game, so, you know, I know that I leveled up by doing the parking space, but I leveled out when it came to working with this computer. And it doesn't mean that you don't manifest. I mean, it's real. We're having challenges. A lot of, it's, sometimes this stuff is wonky. But I could have moved beyond the wonkiness if had the faithfulness that it will work. Because I needed to, I wanted to, it will work. So it wasn't that it didn't work, it was that I was not working. So anyway, um, when you get to this place of leveling up, you've worked hard, you've mastered it, you've accomplished something, you've reached a certain level and you get ready to go to the next level. Now guess what happens at the next level? You are at the beginning stages again. All of a sudden, all this mastery that you had, you find yourself having to begin again. It's like, where can I get this new level? But it's a new level. I've not been at this level, so therefore there are what? New things to learn, new opportunities. And then you're going, oh, wait a minute. Uh-oh, I've been here before. I was a master, now I'm a neophyte. How'd that happen? You know, I was, you're feeling good. See, life does not let you rest on your laurels. You accomplish something that's great, now you go to the next level, which means you got to start the process all over again, learning something new, mastering it, getting comfortable with it, moving up so that this is called the growth process. This is how evolution works. You have to keep leveling up. There's a wonderful article that I, that I wanted to share, and it's a little bit long, but it's by this gentleman named Benjamin um, Hardy, and he has 13 signs that you've leveled up as a person. Now, they're a little long, so I said, well, let me see. You guys up for it? Yes. Okay. And normally I wouldn't read anything this long, but as I was working with it, I kept saying, oh, this is good. Oh, I like that. Oh, this is good. Oh, that, oh yeah, that's an idea. Oh, and I said, you know what? I just need to read the whole thing because I, I want you to get this whole concept. So just bear with me, relax. And he starts off with saying, according to Meta, Analytic data, according to meta, I love the first of all, meta-analytics. It's beyond just the simple analytics, it's meta. According to meta-analytic data, confidence isn't what leads to success. Instead, successful behavior is what creates confidence. 
the more you achieve something, the, you know, it's like, oh, yeah, I got this. I can do this, right? So successful behavior is what creates confidence. So it's not that you're confident that leads, but your behavior, your actions, right? So he says, unlike dopamine, which only lasts a short term, confidence is something you own. You've earned it. Short-term pleasure and long-term joy are two fundamentally different outcomes. Meaning you could do something on the short-term level, you get a little feedback from it, ah! And that's what a lot of sometimes these young people are, they want that quick, fast, you know, instant gratification. Yeah, you get it, but what about the long haul? And he's saying joy is something, that, that long haul, that tapping into that joy over the long haul is a different process. Once you've been begun succeeding at any endeavor, you'll reach a threshold. You've been succeeding now. You're successful at whatever it is that you've chosen to do. He says you'll reach a threshold where you must decide if you're ready to go to the next level. Most people get comfortable at a certain stage because they don't want to deal with the emotional purging involved in leveling up. So meaning leveling up, you got to do new stuff. You can't be dragging. The old stuff is always with you, but you can't drag everything. And sometimes you got to let go so you can learn this new level of life, right? And a lot of people don't want to do that. Oh, I'm too old, right? Or I'm too this. I'm too set in my ways or blah, 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 blah. Okay, well, you want to level out. You don't want to level up at that stage. And that's fine. If you fail to live, you will fail to live. You know, that's just the way that that goes. And then he says, all of a sudden, the confidence you used to have feels completely gone. You're now wondering if you want to do this whole math thing. Oh, let me, I skipped the place. Let me take my glasses off so I can see this. See, it's a, it's a, I'm taking my glasses off so I can see. <laughs> so when you decide, okay, so they don't want to level. When you decide to up level or go bigger, your life becomes very difficult for a short period of time. You may have mastered algebra, but now you're in a calculus class and, come and feel completely disoriented. You felt good about getting that A in algebra. Yeah, I got this. Now calculus, ooh, what is this? Something new. All of a sudden, the confidence you used to feel feels is completely gone. You're now wondering if you want to do this whole math thing at all or whatever it is that you're doing. Have you ever been there? You get to a place, you think you're new place. Oh, I don't know if I want to even do that, right? So despite having a firm foundation, you feel like you're standing on nothing and that everything around you is falling apart. This is what happens. This is what happens when you begin to level up. You've mastered a level. You've lived at a certain consciousness. Now all of a sudden life is presenting something new and you're like, ooh, wait a minute. This is different. Have you leveled up lately? If so, this is a list of, of 13 things that might be familiar. Don't fret. You've been through this before. You've come this far. You've battled hard and you've triumphed. So what he's saying is, hey, look, when you enter into a new venture, it's going to get shaky. It might be scary. Don't worry. You have had many new adventures. You've had many new levels. You didn't know how to walk, right? But you crawled and you stood and you walked and then you ran, right? So we're, there's always a leveling up and we've been here before and you've triumphed, you've battled hard. He says, now things are feeling rough, but it won't be long until you get your stride back. But, but this time, you're more evolved, more able. You're stronger than you were before. The stakes will be higher. You'll have more help and more support. Everything will mean more. When you're leveling up, you get to this next plateau, it's a little shaky, but you're not the same person that you were five or 10 years ago. You're stronger, you know more now. You have more resources, more access. You've done this before. You've done life. You have succeeded, you know? So take all that with you. Now, here's how you know if you're recently leveled up. And this is what, when I read these things, I think this is what we are doing as a species. We are leveling up to the next level of how we are to operate and express ourselves. No longer can the limitations, you got to understand the workings of the mind, the workings of the heart. Now, we here in thought, new thought, 
We kind of understand how the game of life is with these spiritual laws, but we still have to level up. Everybody else is trying to, is trying to level up, but when you do that stuff sometimes, you're at a new level, what happens? The, everything falls apart, it looks like, right? So the first thing, your confidence temporarily drops. If you've been successful in the past and for some reason feel derailed, don't take it as a sign that you're on the wrong path. Chances are you've leveled up without realizing it. Dr. Stephen R. Covey said, we control our actions, but the consequences that flow from those actions are controlled by principles. We know something about spiritual principles, right? All right? So we control our actions, but the consequences, they're, they're controlled by the principles. So when we start applying spiritual principles, we, and we apply them through our actions, through our thoughts, through our feeling, getting everything in lined up with the principles, we know that, oh, okay, certain things are going to manifest. He says, when you've mastered one set of principles, your life will improve. And so I used to say, just take one spiritual principle, friend, and master it. You don't have to read all, like, all the seven laws of the universe and the seven. Take one. Whichever one you choose, and work it, work it, master it, master it, master it. All of a sudden, your whole life will change. You don't have to know the whole kit and caboodle of all the spiritual laws in the universe. Start with one, master that, and see what happens. So he says, when you've mastered one set of principles, your life will improve. You'll become more competent, successful, and confident. Your interactions with other people will be far deeper and more meaningful. Your social group will shift from people solely interested in entertainment to people interested in solving problems and growth. Have you noticed that when you step on the spiritual path, your friends begin to change? You've leveled up, and so... You know, it's not all about hanging out and doing all It's about something of substance. You want to be around people who are doing something, who understand. So you've leveled up. And they're like, well, they might say, you've changed. You're different. Oh, I'm better. <laughs> I'm just better, right? However, once you've mastered a certain level of principles, you'll become aware of and exposed to higher order principles. Once you start mastering one, all of a sudden you're going to be ushered into other higher principles. Immediately, you'll feel like a child again. You don't know how these rules work. You'll begin making mistakes. You've mastered this. Now you've got a new spiritual principle. You're going to make a mistake, all right? You begin to make mistakes. Your confidence will drop. People will say you don't seem like yourself, and you'll wonder if you'll ever be able to feel that same powerful feeling again. He says, don't worry, you will. Two, that's the first one. The first level up is your confidence temporary drops. Number two, everything will feel like it's falling apart. I don't know about you, but I keep saying, Lord, what is going on in the world? Is it all falling apart? And when I was reading this article, I said, you know what? We're leveling up. We're reaching a new dimension where we, more people on the planet are coming into their spiritual power, understanding how things are. And so the old is falling away, and we're ready to take on new levels. And it feels a little shaky, but this is, this is fine. So just before author Napoleon Hill's greatest success in life, he went through several months of depression. Despite knowing deep within himself, himself that he was capable of, he, what he, of what he was capable of, he became paralyzed and incapable. He was at rock bottom. His life, finances, relationships began falling apart. Once again, the pain became severe enough that something happened. All right, here's a man who understood, who knew how the laws of the universe work. Napoleon Hill teaches you how to win friends and influence, you know, just really great guy on the motivational, understanding, high thought. But then all of a sudden, he hit something and he got really depressed and blah, 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 blah. He didn't realize he was at another boom. He had reached a level where he had to up level, right? And so in this new level, he's like, wow, when the pain gets bad enough, you're going to move out of where you are. When you suffer enough, when you get all of a sudden, it's like, wow, I'm so down, depressed. Something within you calls you to level up again, right? So it says, once the pain became severe enough, something happened. A switch flipped. He snapped. 
In his own words, he said, I was seized upon by my other self, which had zero fear, was clearly, completely clear, and operated with definitiveness of purpose. He's down, he's depressed, he's stagnant. He said, then all of a sudden something happened, and he was influenced by his, what, his other self his higher self, his divine self kicked in and all of a sudden he remembered what, who he was, returned to his soul, his soul. And he says, this other self which had zero fear. See, when you start some new thing, you're, oh gosh, can I do it? Boy? But then at some point, when you're really leveling up, that spirit kicks in. You're like, you know what? I've been successful and I can do this. I got this. Come on, God. And we start moving. Because when you're down so long, eventually there's no place else to go except up if you want movement. So he comes back to himself. With this immediate clarity, he was able to get direct insights about how to achieve his goals, right? But this acceleration and advancement came after several months of failure, defeat, confusion, depression. He had leveled up and was facing bigger challenges and responsibilities than he ever had before. So when you level up, your stuff's going to be different. To whom much is given, the Bible says what? Much is required. So when you've, you've achieved this great thing, the next thing is going to be even great, which means you have greater responsibility, greater opportunities, right? You're leveling up, which means you might, feel, you might be facing bigger challenges. And what we're facing now, some big challenges right now, but that's okay because we get ready. We're leveling up, right? We're learning. He says, the ability, this is from a quote he uses from this guy, Will Durant. I think the ability of the average man could be doubled if it were demanded, if the situation demanded. Meaning that when we are pressed, when your back is against that wall and you're pressed, guess what? You're going to find a way out. You'll start thinking, how can I move beyond this? All of a sudden, you didn't realize how much strength you had. You didn't realize that you could actually overcome this until it was demanded of you. And life is going to constantly demand that you level up. Okay, you're good at this, but now can you be good? Now I need you to be good at this. Okay, you've mastered, now I need you to do this. And so we're getting ready to move into having to master our spiritual principles and spiritual nature. Good, the universe is saying, good, you know how to be a human being. You've failed at that, you've succeeded at that, you've got that, but now you're going to level up to being a spiritual being on this planet. And can you imagine, we've not had a whole planet full of awakened people who are spiritual beings yet, but we get ready to level up to that. And so it looks like everything's falling apart, but it's demanding. The situation now is demanding that we bring light. The darkness is calling for light, and we've got to level up, and that's what's happening. So it took a while for him to adapt to the higher order demands of his new situation, but adapt he did and adapt, you will. You haven't yet risen as high as you're about to because you've never been demanded as much as you are now. I love that. You've never risen to this level because you've never been demanded at this point, but now life is demanding. We're going we're gonna to rise up beyond anything we've ever experienced. Gee, I've never really been a, a spiritual adept, the master, where I could decree my words and they're done. I've never been at this level, but I'm, I'm here now. I'm going to learn. I'm leveling up. There's a fear of success lurking within you. You're not sure if you really want to keep ascending, but you already know within yourself that you will. You are resolved. It's done. It's happening. You are being pulled. Let go of the shore and flow. We're being called to let go of the shore. Number three, you'll begin to question yourself and your goals. So in the midst of your confusion and lack of performance as your world is seemingly falling apart, you'll begin to question yourself and the path that you're on. Well, this doesn't look like this is working. I've applied this true stuff. I said a couple of affirmations. My prayers didn't work. I don't know about this path. All right. But first, your life, first of all, your life really isn't falling apart. It's better now than it's ever been before. You're living at a much higher and more powerful level than ever before. You're adjusting to what that means. So you'll rise up. You'll meet this call. We're going to all rise up to be better than we were when we first entered this plane. We're doing it. But in the meantime, you might question, 
clarity, you might lack clarity. You might be surrounded in a fog. You might feel disoriented. Anybody feel any of these things? I'm, I'm like, ooh, what is going on? It's during these moments that you'll need to stick to your core practices. So I know that there's a lot going on, and it's like, okay, I need to come back. That's what I did, yes, I need to come back. I know how to get a parking space. Wait a minute, let me come back. So at this time, you'll need to stick to your practices. You'll need to deepen your learning. Come, take classes, speak, meditate more, be around like-minded people, speak your words, speak your truth, pray, affirm, step into it more. You got to do this. That's what's being called. That's how only way we're going to get out to this next level, right? So you need to deepen your learning, deepen your meditations, your prayer. Even still, for a period of time, the clarity that once seemed to have an infinite flow will feel dried up. That's okay. Keep praying, keep affirming, keep doing, keep learning, keep growing, keep coming to church taking, you know, the things that you know. Four, you might even feel alone if you're leveling up, even among close friends. Despite developing deeper and better relationships, you might feel alone. And the alone time is what you need. It's necessary. Because at this time, you'll need to maintain a deeper what? Connection. When you're so distracted sometimes with all your friends and hanging out, you're not going in. So that's what happened to Helen Keller. Once she got really understanding how to relate, she was able to just now make a deeper connection. Oh, there's something in this. There's something in me that's greater than anything. And once she made that connection with the divine, the divine kept pouring into her. Right? So that's what we have. So she, he, he says, he, you feel alone. You're as sick as your secrets. Isolation won't help you get to where you go. The more successful you become, the more connected you'll need to be. So the more you get out here and you start achieving and don't get high and say, well, okay, I don't have to go to church now because, I, you know, I didn't hit the million-dollar lottery. I'm good. No, 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 no. We start getting away from what we know is true. So the more successful you become, the more you need to keep connected to the divine. All right? the more you'll be. So if you become isolated and stay isolated, <laughs> you'll lose your mind. In that case, everything will be permanently come crashing down. In the words of uh, Greg, your success will become a catalyst, a catalyst for failure. Don't get hung up on your success. Enjoy it, right? But keep it moving. Enjoy it, but don't try to hold on to it because it's going to shift and change. Keep moving. So take this time that you need to get uh, clarity and you don't have to necessarily feel alone. Five, you may feel numb to what used to inspire you, okay? So as you're leveling up, you know, you were really good at something, you were moved by things, but once you're at a certain level, then uh, eh, done that, been there, done that. If you're feeling bored with where you are and what you've done because you've mastered it, that's okay, you're leveling up. So you might feel numb to what used to inspire you. Right? So he says, for a time you'll feel totally disconnected from your passion or your craft or your mission. See, and that's what happened, I think, when we were in this pandemic, we just recognized, oh, I don't really want to go back to that. Oh, I, that's not feeding me any longer. When we got still and quiet, right, and isolated within ourselves and made a deeper connection, we realized, well, what I thought was connecting me wasn't really connecting. I'm done with that. And again, this is what's happening. We're leveling up. So people are like, well, what is it that I really want to do? What is it that's going to bring me passion and life and energy? Because this ain't in any longer. And so, you know, to have a whole society, a world trying to level up and figure out where it is and what's the next place, but this isn't it, right? So you'll feel numb to what used to inspire you. For a time, you'll feel totally disconnected from your passion, your craft, your mission. What used to keep you awake at night with excitement now finds you sleeping in in attempts to avoid it. The external pressure feels too much. It's harder to focus. It's harder to get into the zone. I've done that. I know, okay, I know how to master that. I'm done with that. I need a new thing. It's harder to feel inspired, harder to care. And I think this is what people are going through now. We can't feel, you know, we're not inspired. We're, oh. And something new is trying to be born. So this numbness isn't because you don't care. You're advanced in understanding. You've adapted. You're now being double teamed. <laughs> Your brain is being forced into deal with more at once, right? And this is how you're going to advance. When you plateau out, you get bored until all of a sudden you can't stand that level anymore. You're looking for, okay, something else. You're looking for something else. 
Now when you start looking for the next level, now there's what? Movement, excitement, energy again, passion again, right? So breakthroughs will start to happen. This is how you know, okay, I'm leaving that level, I'm time for a new one. Six, you'll start going through the motions to continue to succeed, but it won't be as enjoyable. Right? Okay, not enjoyable. So you're going to do that. Seven, you'll start making uncharacteristic mistakes and you won't be bothered. <laughs> I like that one. Oh, well, didn't work. Whereas when you first began bored, the thought of failing at something used to frighten you. So you pushed yourself to succeed and drive. But then when you reach it, it's like, okay, yeah, well, all right. Didn't work. So these are signs for you to look at in your life, you know, what's happening with your own things. So you'll start making mistakes because you're trying to move to a new level and the, not, not wanting to be where you are, you're not paying attention. You're not giving it energy so, you know, stuff happens. All right? And you get this confidence. So when you notice that, it's time for you to move on up. Um, and then this one I love. There are countless, number eight, countless opportunities begin to present themselves, but there are distractions along the way. A once-in-a-lifetime opportunity is irrelevant, irrelevant if it's the wrong opportunity. So stuff comes, right? So one of the problems with you is that there'll be more opportunities, they'll present themselves, but you're leveling up for a particular reason. You're leveling up, and you have to learn how to take hold of the opportunities that are available for you. When you put yourself out there in the universe, when you say, okay, you know what, I'm ready to grow, I'm ready for something new, the universe is going to respond. And you might have to make, guess what, a choice. I'm like, I notice in my life right now, I never get just one thing. It's like, why can't you just give me the one thing? Why do you have to give me two things, the great things? It's, I could go to here, I could go to there, and then I gotta choose. Well, which event do I wanna go to? You know? Do I, I, today is a perfect example. A, a good friend calls, she you know, wants me to come, she's not doing well or whatever, but yet I've been feeling this call to go meditate at this ashram. I wanna go sit in the silence and meditate. But this is important too, I really wanna go do this. Now why do I have to, why, can't, why do I have to choose? That's, that's okay. You're leveling up. You will have to choose. That's okay. There are many opportunities. Pick one and move with it. It's okay for you to do that. Um, nine, you'll be faced with a crucial decision. When, when, when the universe is trying to get you to really level up, sometimes it's going to give you a crucial decision to make. Should I quit my job? and go, I just saw this thing where you could take a cruise for three years. Um, it was just advertised. I don't know if anybody saw that. I said, oh, ooh, that sounds like fun. <laughs> <laughs> I could take a cruise for three years. And you, they feed you, you're on the cruise, you get to eat, you travel around the world for three whole years. See, they're enticing people because they know people are probably ready to do that stuff, <laughs> right? But there's a crucial uh, decision. This is at this point, that you're faced with a crucial decision. You'll connect deeper to the why that brought you here, or you'll succumb to the pressure. Why are you here on the planet? Why, has, why does God have you here right now at this time? Do you know why you're here? Sometimes we lose our why, and life has no meaning. I have no idea, I don't know why, I don't care. You need to get in touch with the why. And when you do, then there'll be a decision. As Harriet said, do you want to move forward towards freedom or do you want to die right here on the spot where you are? What's your why? What's your motivation? You know, it's like, oh yeah, I think I want the passion of life again. I want to move forward with my freedom. And so you've got to make a crucial decision that gets you in touch with the why. This is a beautiful opportunity we've been given to learn, to take three years to step aside and say, Ooh, who am I and why am I here and what's important to me and what do I want to do with this thing called life? It's the why. Get back. And then once you make that choice, you're going to need to adjust. You're at another level now. You've got to adjust, right? It says... What got you here won't get you there. I like that. What got you to this point won't get you to that point. Something new is needed, right? 
When the baby learns to stand up, what got them to standing up is not what's going to get them to walk. And they can stand up, but they got to have new sets, of new skills now. Now balance has to come in play. I've got to master balance. Okay, now that I've mastered balance, I've got to master, oh, can I move? Okay, just because I have balance, it's not going to get me to run. I've got to now run. I've got a new thing to do. Constantly leveling up. Right? And we have to keep adjusting to whatever is before us. Keep making the adjustment. This is my why. Okay, yes, I'm here, but now I want to go there. What do I need to get there? And when I get there, oh, there's a new there. Oh, let, what do I need to get there, there? You know, keep moving and evolving. And that says, number 11, you'll need to recommit. You have to keep committing. Yes, I'm willing to take this step. Here I am, I'm willing to grow, I'm willing to unfold. I'm not gonna sit on my laurels, I'm not gonna wish myself. I see the door, I wish myself through the door. Maybe when you become a real spiritual mad, um, uh, adept, you might be able to do that, a spiritual adept, you know, where you can actually transport your body. But until then, you need to get up and walk to the door. I think as a spiritual being, we could actually walk. I believe it. we can walk through walls. We can walk on water. I believe we can do those things because it is possible. But until such time that I have my consciousness there, then I'm going to need to do the things that I need to do to get me through the wall. If I, if I want to go through that wall to the other side, I've got to walk through the door and walk around until such point where I'm at meditation and my power is so deep I can move through it. Until such time, I'm, I'm going to take the next step. I'm going to, what's the next level? Okay, let me walk through the door. And then number 12, you're going to have to quickly adapt to your new lessons. Growth will come. Once you recognize you've, you're being called to level up, there are new things now. Okay, yeah, I was good at this, but now I'm at a place with beginner's mind. Okay, let me learn a new skill. Let me do a new thing. We say every time the Bible says that, you know, there's a new thing. If we stay in touch with the divine, we'll always be presented with the new thing, the next thing, the next level. Even Jesus said, in my Father's house, there are many mansions, and I'm going to prepare a place for you so that where I am, you could be. But there are many levels, right, to life. We've got to move it. You get one level, go on to the next level. You get to that level, go on to This is growth. This is evolvement. This is how things work. And the last thing the no is to enjoy it. Enjoy the process. This is what I, you know, enjoy the process. All the ups and the downs and the ins and outs, enjoy it all. You know, make it, man, make it good. Make up your mind. When I got up this morning, I said, you know what, I'm going to I'm gonna make up my mind to enjoy this day. Sometimes it's as simple as that. I'm going to make up my mind to enjoy this day. Whatever it brings, the ups, I'm going to enjoy it. So, you know, I hope we take the time to recognize the beauty of life, that we are all so empowered. We have everything we need. Don't be afraid when things look like they're falling apart. Muster up the strength to keep moving forward. Keep moving one foot in front of the other. God will continue to guide. It guided Helen. It guided Harriet. It'll guide you. You have to, though, be willing to do the work, be willing to level up. You have everything you need. I don't know about you, but I'm ready, honey. I'm moving, I'm traveling, I'm ready to unfold. So wherever you get to, I hope you enjoy it. Maybe we'll see each other on the by and by. But in the meantime, it's time to level up. Blessings. Oh, blessings. Blessings. Hey. And let's welcome back Safi Lynn. Yes. And we send Richard, who's just taking a little time off, we send him some love and light, and we give thanks for wonderful Rudy and Roderick for being here with us as well, keeping us going. Yes. 
Safi, the colors of love. Wow, what color is love? See, Helen could describe the color of love. She was that in tune. I wonder, what color is love for you? I love it. Purple trees and orange moons and get out of the box. Create, express. So let's just take a moment and give thanks by just kind of meditating for a brief moment. I like to cement all of the feelings that we have in this inner presence. And in this stillness and quiet, feel the presence that is God in this stillness Feel the peace that can heal your soul. With each breath that you take, it is filled with the healing vibrations of God. Whether you're seeking more clarity, guidance, or direction, a 
whether you need a physical healing. Maybe you want more harmony in your relationships, more love. Whatever it is, claim it now. Use your I am, I am love. I am healed. I am guided and directed. I am empowered from on high. I am fulfilled right now. I am that I am. And so we offer deep gratitude and thanksgiving. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Father, Mother, God, for the good. Thank you, God. Just take a few more deep breaths. And so it is. Amen and amen. Our affirmation, beloved ones, for this week says, I am empowered from on high. I raise my consciousness and my vibrations, and I level up beyond my limits. And so it is. Praise the good. Amen. Let's affirm this together. I am empowered from on high. I raise my consciousness and my vibrations, and I level up beyond my limits. Praise God, and so it is. Work with this affirmation this week. If you come up against a limit that you've held on to or that seems to be presented to you, level up. Know that you can move beyond any limitations with the power and presence of God. And so, beloved ones, we are grateful and thankful for you, for your presence. We bless you. We take a moment to bless our offering, all that you share with this ministry, and we know that it will return to you that which you give under spiritual law, the law of giving and receiving. That which you give out to the universe returns to you, and not necessarily at the same level, but a greater level, a higher level. So we give thanks. This is the affirmation, says, divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. Let's affirm this divine process together. Divine love, through me, blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. This is the spiritual law. Thank you, thank you, God, for everything. If you're here for the first time, we don't pass the baskets. We have the sanctuaries, boxes in the back of the sanctuaries. Let's stand, and yes, you can continue to play that. Thank you, my team, my wonderful AV team, who's working on Let's give them some love. And let's stand and sing now our closing songs. You, you light up my life.
that's the truth. 